thank you for that. Uh, sorry. Um, something is causing my mic to be muted from time to time, and I don't know what the cause is. Um, but I will pay attention to that and try and figure that out. Um, thanks for pointing that out, Rick. Um, uh, yeah, so, hi, I'm Morgan. My pronouns are they and them. This is my Twitch channel, Tempest Games. And, uh, this is where I do live world building. And I do some TTRPG stuff. Hopefully some design in the near future. And I also do some board game design. Um, let's see. Let's look at my to-do list for today. Um, so you'll notice that I've snazzed up the, um, transitions a little bit better. It was a bit sloppy because I had been, uh, tight on time the last time I fixed it, but that's all smoothed out. Um, not as exciting as I would like it to end up being eventually, but, um, nice and simple, nice and easy to do. Well, minus that transitions plugin, that's a pain. That's a headache. Spend hours doing that and still not know up from down. Um, but as always, if you have any tips for what I'm doing, but better, um, you can reach me on Twitter at at Tempest TT Games. Uh, today's show, we are working on the player's guide to Kinda. Kinda is the um, world, my setting, my homebrew setting, if you could call it. Um, it's, uh, a sort of modified fantasy with a dash of post-apocalypse with strong themes of trauma. Um, today we are going to get around to finishing naming some regions and, uh, then eventually move on to West Timbaland and further. So that should be super interesting. Thanks for the link, Rick. Okay. Let's get moving on here we're gonna switch over i have a handy new thing this is one of the things you can't see on the background i have a little uh, program set up on my phone to manage all of my transitions and starting things and it's so much easier there's less mouse clicking and i can do it from a distance if i want to be um really contrived and turn it on just as I'm sitting down in my chair but I it just doesn't feel natural to me so I haven't been I decided not to do that this week um anyway let's switch over to the monitor there we go okay ooh, we're gonna start over here first now I had a pretty hefty duty session of naming things on my own uh, a couple weeks ago and it was good fun, difficult. And the result of it was this map that I drew using draw.io. I heavily recommend it for all sorts of things. Um, I've seen a lot of people do their um, DM prep uh, flowcharts using draw.io. And I've seen people draw maps less, even more figurative than this one is. And this one is pretty figurative. Um, but it's a, it's a, um, what do you call it? I mean, it's, it's essentially a chart, um, web app at draw.io. Um, and, um, all of these are little like, uh, uh, flow chart items with text and a little square space that I just shrunk down really tiny. Uh, and then put a name on top of, and then drew lines in between to represent roads. Um, and this is just one large item that would be on the chart. And this is another item that would be on a chart with another one on top of that. And, um, everything's, the shapes are all really figurative. Um, I, you know, I have no idea exactly what shape the world is yet. So, I mean, we'll find that out eventually. Um, Interestingly enough, I got introduced to some um, world building games uh, recently and got to play one. I got to play Microscope. Uh, was it last week, Rick? Um, that was fabulous. I thoroughly enjoyed that. And thank you to Wheelie from the um, UK and IR 
TTRPG Discord uh, for uh, introducing us to that game. Um, I heavily recommend that Discord, by the way, if you are from the UK and Ireland and similar time zones and regions. Those people are all super lovely. Um, and I've really enjoyed getting to meet them. I've already played a game and it's only been uh, in existence for a few weeks. So that's great. Uh, I think for the world, I would like to try and play a game of microscope to actually build a history for it. Um, I, I don't ha I have almost nothing about the world. So I think it would be an ideal a uh, sort of situation for experimenting with playing something like microscope where there is a, a, a you know, a, a prompt because normally with microscope, you start with a complete blank page. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, I have, these are the names of towns. I haven't put the names of regions on here. I think I need to update it with that and I make need to make it a little prettier. Um, there's stuff like this that I added on and also the hex I added on afterwards, uh, using GIMP. Um, I think I'm going to do more of that. I think I might get rid of the names of things on my, on the draw.io map and then add them in using GIMP because then I think it'll just be neater. There'll be more contrast. I have more options for, um, font and so forth. Um, obviously, you know, a flowchart, uh, program is not really designed to make everything look super pretty. Um, this bit like this, where I have the, the C represented, that's just more of these bubbles, but filled in with this slash mark pattern and with no border. And then just laid out without any titles and then I put the wold on top of it it's quite it's quite nice quite fun these are just lines with arrows on them the rivers it works out really well um so I have named all but two regions I've got names for all of the towns so we know Penaven. Penaven is our um, sort of starter spot. And then Nillenhold is the big town over. And then across the river and up into the foothills is Bridge End. Then uh, let's see, you've got the Swift, which is a sort of uh, narrow, fast moving uh river that comes out of Lake Isa, which is up in the foothills of the Faceless Mountain. Then furthest to the east here we've got Kinsmeat. Um Kinsmeat is called that because it's meant to, it's very idealistic naming of the place. Um it's meant to be where they um it's sort of the the headquarters for m forming relations with the halflings in the mold. Um, then you've got New Defiance, uh, which goes this way and is right up here again, right up against the mountain. Uh, New Defiance. At, you know what? I'll go through the stories of why everything is named what it is when I have the, the page in front of me that details all of that, because I might get it wrong because I haven't looked at this in a couple of weeks. Um, uh, Venture Home. And now, funnily enough, I only named this flat, fat river because I didn't know there was a river there until I was trying to find out for reasons for these towns to exist. And then I thought, you know, it makes a lot of sense if there is a big river here. Um, that is a part of the economy. Um, and I named it Fat River because it was just a placeholder. And then I thought, you know what, given the way people name things in real life, just leave it as Fat River. That's just what it's called. Fat River. 
Um, so we've got rest here in the middle and then hedgehog off on the edge. Hedgehog is the furthest away from Mimini City, but Ventraholm is not that far off from being quite uh, near distance wise. Ventraholm is almost as far as hedgehog is. Um, and then arrows pointing to this is Odevian is direct. That's the other city. So they've got the three uh, elven mega cities. A Mimini City, Calyrax to the west, and Odevian to the north. Um, and I was trying to do hexes. I'm not sure I like the distances from everything because Penaven and Nillenhold are supposed to be half a day's travel away from each other. But the he a hex is normally about a day's travel when you look at hex maps um i mean it do you know what it does often change like rick's hex maps for instance are, are um what is it like four hexes a day um i think they i think the six miles is also a really traditional so i could oh that's true i hadn't thought about that i could just make the hexes smaller i need to find a good um, hex image to lay over and then uh, get small enough that's that's a bit hard it's it's hard to make automatic hex patterns um, there are programs that will like make them for you but the one that I found always puts um, index numbers in each of the hexes and I don't like the way that looks um yeah, you're right. There are there are three scales in D and D. There's the six mile scale. There's the one day scale. Is uh whatever that is, twenty four miles. I think is what D and D says. Um, I can't remember what the third one is. Hmm. Is the third one just going to squares where it's it's five feet? One mile. Oh, okay. I don't think I've seen any one mile hex maps. Interesting. Okay. Um, again, because we're not designing for D&D. Um, I don't have to follow those scales, although it is very user friendly to do so. Um, and I always try to be user friendly. Um, Yeah, so that's the map that I made. It needs some tweaks. We're going to work on that. Um, let's go into... My mini city and eight lorddoms. So, got eight lorddoms. West Timbland. East Timbland. We've got the flats. The flats is... If we go back to this map... Uh, these are the flats, Kinsmeet. Kinsmeet is the farming, uh, lorddom. Then, um, let's see, we've got the fourth lorddom, which is one of the ones I haven't named yet, which we're going to try and get to. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. Easier if I do it this way. Ooh, it loads slowly when I've got whole bunch of stuff running on my computer there we are Boop -a -doop. oh this isn't the right one either gosh darn it is it my theory I think it's my theory page that explained what everything was for where are you going? Uh, uh, try to eat or dumbs. Get this to load. There we go. Aha. Yep. That's my one. Okay. Um, so, oh, that's not right. <laughs> Bridge end is in West Timbland. Um, where their task is to fix the bridge 
and make contact with um, Calyrax's humans. Nelenhold is the west near East Timbaland, where we've been working a lot. Ships and sea trade is their business. Kinsmeet is in the flats. That's the town that we saw next to the wold here. Um, lots of farming going on there. Uh, part of the reason uh, it, they're lucky that it's uh, near the wold is because the wold, uh, the halflings are a very agricultural based society. Um, so locating their experimental farming uh, activities near the wold means that they can um, try and learn things from the halflings that the halflings would know that they wouldn't because the elves kept it from them. Um, then we've got Rest. That is that fourth l uh, lorddom that I haven't got a name for. Uh, Rest is named so because they view their task as taking knowledge from the elves. They're wresting it from their grasp. Um, it's based in an old elven ziggurat. Um, that's where the that's why they located the town there. Um, I haven't found any particular reason for naming the region yet but we'll get to that then we've got new defiance which is that one in the foothills of the crease uh new defiance is named so because they found uh an old an ancient human uh settlement there um it's the only one known to exist. Uh, it's impressive that any part of it is still standing, not only because of two and a half thousand years, but also because it seems that the elves actively went and dismantled all of the human settlements that used to exist before they occupied the continent. So new defiance, the people who set out to create a settlement in this, the ruins of this ancient town, human town, um, uncovered it and found through some uh, sketchy translations uh, that the name of the town that used to be there, they decided it was called Defiance. Whether or not that's accurate, um, well, that is not something that can be totally proved because like of all of archaeology, we are very much laying our own understanding of the world on top of these remains of civilization. And so it's entirely plausible to think that we could be wildly inaccurate about what we find. So um, the idea I have in my head is that hang on a second. I've just realized that there's almost no my desktop got muted so that you were not getting any sound from my music. I need to check my little touch interface. I think that might have gone a little bit wrong, but we will see. There, you've got bed music now. Okay, uh, what was he saying? So yeah, they found a lot of, a lot of things labeled defiance all over town and so they've logicked out that that's what they think the, the town used to be named so they've named the new town that they're putting up next to it new defiance um it is in the region of drakemar 
because the region is actually um, a series of deep, narrow valleys, three of them, all parallel with each other. Um, this The suspicion is that that is the only reason that um, this ancient settlement uh, remained intact is because it was buried so deep in one of these valleys that it was never really found uh, by the elves. Um, it There is a theory as well that this town uh, remained independent from Mimini City and the elves longer than every other town. Um, but there's really no way to prove that at all. Uh, so anyway, um, from the mountainside, this region looks a little bit like, um, some colossal dragon or taloned creature, um, raked its claws through the side of the mountain. Um, and so they've, they've named it Drakemar. Um, yeah. Then let's see. The next one I've got on this list is Hedgehog, which is in the region of Scholar's Reach. Reach because it's very far from its central, you know, we'll call it governing body. Um, and Scholar's because that is where the magic users have gone. Um... It is, well, see, that says it's next to the farming lorddom, but that is not how it has worked out, has it? I think that was just something that, logically speaking, with all of these towns, I couldn't quite work into it. Um, I think, to be honest, Kinsmeet, being the farming town, is close enough to Mimini City that it's... No surprise that, uh, um, I mean, it's, it's not really necessary for it to be closer to Hedgehog. I think it works. It, anyway, it's, it's small stuff. There's no need to really get busy about that. Although I bet you there is a small area of Kinsmeat called Little Hedgehog. Um, because the name comes from the fact that um, the town is almost a hundred percent wizard's towers, which if you've heard my other descriptions of the architecture of these places, they use a lot of long houses with, um, flat tops and lots of plaster and wattle and daub and a wizard's tower probably needs to be built largely out of stone. It's very unusual architecture. In fact, the way I see it, it is the architecture you would find in the magic district in Mimini City. Um, and that is where they got the idea. And in fact, there are very few people who were skilled enough, uh, very few humans who were skilled enough to make these buildings. And so they've probably all gone to Hedgehog. Um, and so you've got little Hedgehog in, um, say, uh, Kinsmeat, because... It being the farming place and the farmer's guild is the magic guild. They're the same thing. Um, there's probably a little cluster of wizard towers in Kinsmeet as well. Um, and yeah, so I think it's also up on a hill, which gives it that particular appearance of appearance of a hedgehog because it's got little spiky towers um, all up on this big rolling hill. In the middle of the countryside. Um, so yeah, we're going to delete this bit because that is just not how it worked out. Um, it is indeed the furthest from Mimini City. And the location of the Farmer's Guild's Satellite School for Magic. Then we've got Hartford. Uh, and this is another region that I haven't named. Um, it is uh, colloquially known as sort of the bandit lorddom. 
um, because it's where uh, it's the town that the bandits took over. And I think it's um, it's where art is the thing. Culture. Culture is the business of Hartford. And now I think also because it's on it's on Fat River, which needs a ford to get between this half of the eight Lord Dums and these three. Um, it's also, uh, it's business is also river travel. I think, I think Hartford has, uh, several, um, masted barges that can travel up and down the river and thus, um, do a lot of trade with Venture Home up here. Venture Home is really far. Um, and sort of awkward to get to because you have to go this way. So in fact, in, in matter of travel, Venture Home is quite possibly further away from Hedgehog. Um, unless, and this is probably a common thing to do, or at least a possible thing to do, depending on whether or not there's like room for passengers, but you can go to Hartford and you can pay for passage on one of their barges and the barge will take you upriver to venture home. Um, let's see. So culture, river travel and trade. Um, and it's where the bandits are. And I like that it's in the middle of everything. Uh, because it means that the bandits, I can take advantage of the conflict created by the bandits. Um, potentially the land itself is not good for much of anything. So the bandits are likely to have to rely a lot on, we'll call it trade. Although it's probably a lot more crime than trade or what we would call trade in a more lawful society or I'm sorry what we would call crime in a more lawful society um I don't know if they get up to the art culture so much anymore that is definitely something I need to explore is what has happened with the bandits like what effect the bandits had on the lordom itself the way it runs um, yeah. Okay. Then we've got ventral home, which is that one that's sort of stuck in between the mountain and the river and it's close to the river. So it can benefit from boat travel back and forth. And they probably build barges a lot to take people swiftly down the river. Um, but it's, primary business is making contact with um, civilization to the north to Odevian and potentially even the dwarves. I'm not sure if they know where the dwarves are, but they would definitely have a good idea of where Odevian is. And so this, these are the people who concentrate on all of that travel and adventure. And I do believe that Venture Home is where the concept of adventuring originates. Um, that should be uh, a very interesting bit of, of backstory there for some people, potentially. Um, let's see what I've got next. It's called Far Reach because it's, a, it's one of the Reach lorddoms and it's far away. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay. That's the, the remaining six Lord Dumbs. I am actually going to take a quick break here. Um, and then I will come back. Um, uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Sorry. Just getting my little timer going. Um, and I'll be right back. And we're back. Thank you. Oh, look, and it reset all the volumes correctly. Good. Okay. Well, 
Still don't know what was causing all of that muting and volume going to zero stuff. Um, yes, I absolutely adore the idea of an adventurer town. Mostly because I'm just really fond of weirdos and I think it's a town full of absolute weirdos. That is all for me. Um, it can't be Discord um, because Discord can't affect OBS in any way. And it's OBS that's doing the muting and volume dropping. Um, so let's see. Where are we at? Um, we've got our... We've talked about our eight Lord Dums. Um, we know which ones we need names for. We need a name for this Lord Dum right here. And we need a name for this Lord Dum right here. Um, so we're going to go into the article in the player's guide. Do, do, do East Timbland and further. And now I just have it chunked as the six Eastern Lord Dums, but I think, I think we're going to break it up even further. We're going to call it the central Lord Dums. And that's four of them. So that would be, I'm going to leave that there. Um, and then down here. Oh, I need to create. No, I don't have a right. What hierarchy is it's heading to? We're going to come on. Thank you. Heading to. Um, so we've got the central lordums. We've got the, um, so East Timbaland and West Timbaland are going to be something like, you know, the home lordums or the near lordums. Then we've got, um, three, four, five, and six, which are the central lordums. And then we've got the reaches, which is the lordums that are furthest out and that are, they're literally the reaches. It's far reach and, um, scholars reach far reach and scholars reach. So the closest Lorddom to Nillenhold is, there we go. Why is it? Okay. Um, is the flats. Then you've got the fourth, and you've got the bandit Lord Dum, and then you've got Drake Mar. So we know that our city in the flats, our town in the flats, is called Kinsmeet. And. Our town in the fourth lorddom is called Rest. And in the bandit lorddom, it's called. I don't know why it's no style. Might be a little. Uh, beta issues. So this one is called Hartsford. Right? Is that the right? Is it with the S? No, it's just Hartford. Um, and then in Drake Mar, we've got New Defiance. And Far Reach, um, it's a, a venture home. And sorry, I gotta look down beyond my monitor's edge there. In Scholar's Reach, we've got Hedgehog. So, Kinsmeet, Farming, 
and um, what do we call it? Not diplomacy, but um, uh, not negotiations, relations, relations with the walled. Um, then we've got, yep, plunder the elves, all right, we call it, um, it's not archaeology, um, hmm, It's not really an investigation. What is it? How would you sum up the activity there in one word? It's a really good question. Um, eh. Say plunder Elven Ziggurat. Yeah, see, I just think that plunder to say plunder and scavenges is to narrow a term. Um, but I can always I can do with that um specific wording when I get to writing the document. Hartford is um river trade well it's not unearthing because it was never earthed um before before the exodus um the ziggurat was an active um research center for the elves that's why i'm i'm struggling with trying to find the right word for what the general activity is there other than plundering. It's somewhere in the, the level of archaeology or investigation. Recover? That's not bad. Recover knowledge from the elven cigarette. Okay. Hartford, we've got River Trade, um, River Trade and Culture. Uh, okay, bandits took over the town between the first and second Lord's Moot. Lord's Moot's plural. Um, we'll say some time because only the bandits know precisely when that happened. And then we've got New Defiance, uh, which is, um, archaeology. Well, that's basically it. Archaeology. Um, recover human culture. Ancient human culture. And let's see. Located in the deepest, narrowest valley. Also, it was named for the original settlement. No, I rephrase that. Based 
near the last no only remaining mm, no that's not right either known human only known Ugh. Words are not coming to me today. I'm a bit tired. I've been stressed out lately um, for reasons. And when I get stressed out, my chronic fatigue makes me need extra sleep. And I have not been able to find that lately. So sometimes I'm just lost for words. And now is definitely one of those times. Based near the only known, the you know, known to exist ruins of a, an ancient human settlement named. I want to do this in a set up. Named for. Common um, translations. That uh, doesn't make sense either. The brain goes to some weird places when I'm like this. Frequently, when I write things when I'm in this frame of mind, I frequently have to go back to them a week later and just be like, wow, what was I thinking? And rewrite them. Speaking of which, um, uh, my last... Uh, stream that I did was about DM prep um, and I was feeling even worse than than I am feeling now and it was also a new topic for me and I wasn't sure how to structure it turns out my and uh, my <laughs> initial attempt was terrible I'm really not pleased with how that show went so I'm going to be and the next time I do DM prep I'm just going to do it all over again let's <laughs> just start from zero uh, we'll delete that old video and <laughs> the new one will be all there is. I think I've got a better idea of how, how to structure that. So it makes a little bit more sense. I think I was trying to be a bit too clever, a bit too worried about spoilers, but I don't think that's sensible really, um, for what I was trying to do. So, um, I'm looking forward to getting to, uh, uh try that again. <laughs> um, Okay, so named for um, common oh, what the Why can't I find a way to phrase this that makes sense? It seems like a really simple idea in my head. And then I try to put words to it. And it's like trying to speak in a foreign language. The word defiance was found frequently among the ruins and determined to be the name of the settlement. Um, I think that in reality that defiance was a matter of some kind of protest. Maybe like graffiti or like placards of some kind. Um, maybe the town was starting to be referred to as defiance. Um, because of what it was doing um, in the early days of the elven occupation. Is probably not its actual name, 
but from an archaeological standpoint, it seemed like it would be. Okay, let's see. Um, let's go to the reaches. Okay, Ventraholm. Uh, making contact with the north. Yeah, that's it. That's basically its only purpose is to make contact with the north. Um, and Hedgehog. Uh, uh, um, satellite school for magic. Um, covered. Uh, wait, uh, uh, large hill covered in wizards towers that's what gives it its name okay let's look at these names um oh no before before we look at the names themselves i should probably say you may have noticed that the names of all of these places are english words basically there's nothing foreign sounding uh, about them um, the closest I get to that is, um, in, it is, what is it? Um, Holm in Venture Holm, um, which is, um, I believe pro probably Scandinavian on origin. Um, I don't know what you would call that culturally. I'm really bad at, um, British historical influences. So, um, you know, the timings of the Normans and the Romans and, and further back and all of that. Um, there's a lot of layered, um, history going back that far in the British Isles. Um, and if you're not from here, it can get, it can feel really complicated, um, and a bit hard to follow. Um, so if I get any of that wrong, I welcome that you correct me. Um, I'm probably going to get some of it wrong and I'm sorry. I don't mean to. Um, so yes, I believe, like, I believe the word home has some kind of like either Viking or like Saxon origins or something like that. Um, just meaning home. Like, I mean, yeah, it's potentially where we get the word from. I haven't looked up the etymology. Um, but I have generally avoided things like that. Like, I'm actually starting to think that Penaven needs to be renamed. Because Penaven has too much of that linguistic history in it. Because I got that from uh, naming conventions in the southwest region of the British Isles. Um... Pen meaning cliff and Avon meaning river. Um, and it is it is on a plateau over a river. That's where the name comes from. And I'm thinking, and this is actually going to require quite a bit of going back into things, but I'm thinking of actually renaming Penaven. And this feels really big deal to me because this is my first, first village. It is the central village and all of this. But I'm thinking of renaming it High River because of the language of these places and the language of this people. They only have one language. And I think we talked a little bit about this before, actually, because I remember talking to you about the potential for a pidgin language in one of the cities. Potentially one of the cities managed to hold on to some of its um, original human language and created a pigeon. It might be this one. It would make sense given new defiance. Um... But generally speaking, the language... 
everywhere in this world the common language rather than being some something generally known as common the common language is actually elven everyone speaks elven even the dwarves who don't even associate um everyone speaks real elven elven is the common language so even if these people spoke a pigeon um it would be a uh, um flavor language so you can assume that all of the names of these places are actually elven but because we are coming from a point of view of english speaking to us it's just it's that artistic translation um in order for it to feel to us like it's our own language it needs to be in, in english that's why everything here is english basically um when i get around to naming the wold i believe that the wold is going to have a lot of those um welsh and cornish sounding names i think that's the way that's going to work out so i i, I still Oh, I'm so, I'm actually kind of mad about this and kind of don't want to give it up, but I think Penaven needs to be renamed to High River. Oh, man. I really, like, don't want to do it. But it's the right thing to do. What a shame. Um... So when naming all of these places, we need to remember to stick to the English. So in trying to, yeah, kill your darlings is right. Kill your babies. That's how it works. I actually, you know what? I've been writing for 30 years. Um, and I don't think that I've ever had to make a change that I hated as much as changing the name of Penaven right now. <laughs> I think I'm normally pretty good at killing my darlings if I can recognize that they need to be killed because sometimes that is the hardest part in killing your darlings is being able to see it at all that it, it's a thing that needs to be done okay so let's look at this map of the countryside again rest we need to re we need to name rest the region around rest so it's the furthest in the central lorddoms. That's these four here. It is on the border of the reaches. Um, there can't be anything particularly... Well, actually, if the elven ziggurat is there and the ziggurat functions as... Uh research center there has to be a reason that the elves were there in the first place um, now well, once we get into like designing the adventures you'll find that there's actually another ziggurat about here-ish um And that's actually really important that it stays that way because essentially, um, well, I suppose you could send them there instead. No, the whole premise of the adventure doesn't work if it's not someplace other than this, which is a fun little adventure. Um, a, uh, dwarf has passed through the area, uh, um, stealing I don't know if it's stealing or not but uh likely the humans would probably consider it stealing um they've they've passed through the area stealing elven artifacts including um some urns uh this is another bit of, of world building that I had come up with and so uh, an element of elven culture in which they bury urns in mounds 
and we're not talking dead people here. Um, it's, it's a form of, it's, it's mostly a ceremonial ritual. It's, it's, uh, marking an event or a place or something important and giving it a scent, a focal point for, um, for remembrance. So uh, there's an urn and they frequently have like words inscribed on these urns and then they are um, put on a, on a pedestal and then covered over with a mound that is, you know, tall enough to, you know, notice easily with the naked eye. Um, and this dwarf has been wandering through the area uh, um, digging up these urns and various other elven artifacts and bringing them back to a ziggurat um, in West Timbland where he has um, uh, uh, founded uh, the, what is it called? Um, the Elven Occupation Museum. So he's turned it into a museum where he displays all of these artifacts of the um, occupation and he's charging people to come see it. Um, and there's a whole village that like, you know, is employed by him essentially of humans um, to help run this museum. And uh, what happens is um, Penaven actually High River. Oh, I'm going to have to start getting used to that. High River uh, erected one of these mounds because it, remember that the citizens of High River are half elven largely. Um, they erected one of these mounds in the grove um, where they camped, which is called Founders Grove, um, where they camped during the occupation um, as remembrance of their sort of origins as it were um and the dwarf passing through assumed that it was purely something of the elves and given that it's off at the distance from high river um dug it up took the urn brought it back to the ziggurat and so the party has to go recover this urn and there's a lovely there's a couple of puzzles in this ziggurat um that are really exciting like um, the ziggurat is actually guarded by a spectator, um, who was placed there by the wizard that the elven wizard that ran the place during the occupation. Um, and so you have to figure out how to get, uh, past the, uh, spectator, which is a whole lot of fun. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I, oh, I remember the one time that I played that adventure and it was really amusing. I got to do a funny voice for the spectator. The spectator wasn't aggressive. Um, uh, but obviously has rules to follow. That's its whole existence is based on a set of rules created by this wizard. Um, however many years ago. Um, and so you can get in and you can look around the museum and, and Oh, the spectator's name is Ted. And a uh, uh, name obviously given to it by the um, by the dwarf in order to make it seem more friendly. Um, and uh, do a weird voice for that. And um, oh man, it was it was just super fun. And then there's like a big puzzle in the, in in the building. Um, where there's a little, uh, a potential surprise reward that my players didn't get. They completely ignored my little weird and there's a clicking sound and nothing happens. And they went, oh, that's funny. And then they kept working on the puzzle, trying to get the thing that they were trying to get. Um, <laughs> and I was like, there was a really cool magic item there. And they're like, what? <laughs> it's like yeah it's too late you missed it now <laughs> um anyway it's it's a good adventure i like that one i really enjoyed making that one 
Um, where were we? I've completely lost. So yeah, uh, why is that ziggurat there? I've been thinking there needs to be some kind of a research center for... Um, like an ecological research center. Something close enough to... Sorry. Something close enough to Mimini City to be based there. But far enough away to be really, really wild. And also, it would have to be within reach of lots of different um, ecosystems. I'm trying to remember my biology here. Um, you could potentially say that because it's really close to the mountains still. You got the big river and the ocean. And it's far enough away from the wolds that it's not necessarily tainted by halfling activity. Okay, so that's why the ziggurat was there. <laughs> I'm just noticing that my um, caption plugin does not understand the word ziggurat. Not even a little bit. It has no idea <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, that'll be fun to correct. How many times did it say the word ziggurat in this stream? Um, okay. So it's... I mean, visually speaking, there's not a lot interesting about that area in itself it's in the middle of everything it doesn't have a particular landmark if we're being literal with landmark and not considering the buildings um Okay, let, let's let's come back to that. Um, this this region is the next one that we need to name. Uh, that Hartford is based around, and I think we were saying it's kind of barren. Um, it's got floodplains. Um, and maybe it's just a bit rocky, silty, maybe. Let's see, we've already got a delta down here. High River, the west side of River Temple is a, is a delta. And um, the coastline south of High River is a marsh. So it, it might feel a little bit strange to have so many deltas and marshlands dotted in this one area. I mean, okay, so this is called the Flats. Maybe this is like the North Flats and this is the South Flats. That makes... Ooh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Okay. Let's do that. Where's my... There it is. Okay. Oops. Call this the North Flats. And this is the South Flats. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's look at our naming conventions here. So we've got description of the land, description of the land, description of the land, um, distance, purpose and distance.
Um, we've got a lot of names after purpose. We've got historically based names. We've got a, a, um, one name of the appearance of a place. Like a figurative. I mean, there's definitely nothing special about that region. Is there a way that maybe we can flag that? That it's in the middle of everything? That there's nothing special about it? Except for that ziggurat. We should probably kind of stick out like a sore thumb. Well, no, if you consider the way the elves built it, um, elven ziggurats are built with um, stone and vines. Instead of mortar, the vines themselves are trained to hold the ziggurat together. Um, and so the building is essentially covered in plant life you can hardly tell that it's made of stone and from the inside there'd be this very heavily textured um wall um where the, the vines are all like like the roots of the vines are um tied up against the stone creating an interesting texture on it um so I don't think it would stick out exactly. It would look like an oddly shaped hill, probably. Any thoughts, Rick? Hmm. Okay, let's um let's pull out our handy dandy web browser and let's do Thesaurus Unremarkable. Wait for the page to load, because I got a million things going on right now. Okay. Looking for Discreet. Interesting. Unexceptional. Undistinguished. Humdrum. Mediocre. Hmm. Garden. Quotidian. Fun word. Run of the mill, settled, hmm. every day, commonplace, common. Hmm, I just had a thought. Um, wanted? Interesting. 
you could almost look at it like a wheel hub. Like it's dead center. Like the axle of a wheel. Or the hub of a wheel. Only the area itself is not a hub. It can't, it, yeah. Rest doesn't have direct access to New Defiance or Venture Home. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back to that list. Ordinary, informal, lowly, mainstream, middle of the road, mundane, vanilla, ignorable. Oh, like the place you can pass through really easy. I, there's something in that. Meager. Hmm. Waypoint. Middling. Yeah, no, I like the idea that it's it's a place you can pass by or pass through without really looking at. Um, I like I like the concept in that. I think that works but as a name <sighs> hmm. place you don't stop place you continue through right, let's try Look up some antonyms for stop. Liminal? Hmm. Actually, I think I want to do through instead. so slow all right you know what i'm gonna close gimp because i don't think we're gonna get to making a new map this time around Over, buttoned up, complete, completed, concluded, ended. Ah. Not that kind of through. Oh, sorry. I'm just trying to close this. Discard changes. And go away. Thank you. Okay, so I want, uh, by way of. Preposition. Consequence is a result of it, Hannah, because of, by, by dint of, by means of, by reason of. For, uh, it's not quite using via. That's, yeah, okay, let's see what we've got in here. Around, round, surrounding, through, throughout, at, because, by, complete. It's on the next page. Overlooked. Ooh, that's not bad. That's getting somewhere. Direct, continuous, linear. No, that's not quite right. Done, done for, finished, inward, more complete. Per, no, 
straight. Dark challenge. Yeah, horizontal and flexible. Mm, it's not quite right. Uninterrupted. Well, this one's proven to be really tough. No, straightforward. Straightforward, it is not. <laughs> Thereby. Uninterrupted. Through unceasing, undisturbed, unending, unremitting, perpetual, steady, straight, straightforward, sustained, direct, endless, interminable, non stop. No. This is not proving to be helpful. Way stop. I would like like waypoint or way stop, but that implies that it's on the way to somewhere. And this region is not on the way to somewhere. Sort of, it's like a detour. Um, yeah, you'd have to you'd have to go on a detour in order to find. What have you got? Let's see if I can open that page. Outlying, distant, remote, far away, far flung. Strange, unusually peculiar, odd, unexpected, unfamiliar, abnormal, off center. Ugh, still just not quite it. This is gonna drive me nuts. Maybe I shouldn't have picked one that I thought was hard before I started. <laughs> um let's look up the verb pass Sleepy. Hmm. Catch, cross, develop, give, go, happen, leave, move, occur, reach, run, take place, befall, crawl, cruise, depart, drag, fare, flow, fly, glide, hide, journey, lapse, linger, proceed, progress, repair, rise, roll, Transpire. Travel wind. Blow past. Blow by. That's that's a common phrase for something for to like a colloquial term for a place that you never stop in. A blow by. Blow pass, come to pass. Backwater. Backwater says more about like about it culturally than it does uh, geographically. Ooh, that's a long, a long one. Oh, what about Maybe we should think about it in cultural terms. Let's 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 look at it from the perspective of the first flight. So, we've got a group of people who have been put together to um uh uh 
to dismantle a uh, a sort of vault of knowledge, which means they would have to be fairly savvy in the ways of elven science to make heads or tails of this stuff. So we could be talking about essentially a group of scientists or the closest thing to scientists that the humans have. And so they're thinking in terms of what they could learn. They perhaps, let's say the ziggurat was a private project like the other one was. Now that would make sense. We didn't have two private projects. The other one was definitely a private project. The one in West Dibland, I mean. Um, this one would have to have been a group project, like there was um, a, a, some kind of scholars organization that ran this, and it was an ecological science subject of some kind. Um, So you'd have to have people, more than likely, these were people who were in the, um, like, administrative castes. Um, the big trouble is that, or the big problem is that um, very few people would have any kind of knowledge that would be helpful in this area because... The magic districts in the elven cities were very closed off to human eyes. Um, even to the point of not having janitors and the like. Um, so we're probably talking household servants, ex-household servants... So from the cast of people who were, um, uh, what do you call them? Um, body servants, um, someone who would spend enough time with a scientist when they were at home to have gleaned some kind of information about what they did and maybe found space and time to sneak around with their master's um, uh, uh, personal library, personal office, learning things from it. So this is these are the kinds of people that we're saying have gone to this place. Um, or certainly these are the people who are leading the first flight. Then you've got people who would have to be experts in, I don't know, being careful around buildings. So probably a lot more servants, people who are, are uh, comfortable with the way that elves live their lives and lay things out and are... careful about them. I don't want to say they have respect for them because I'm sure they don't. Um, parochial. Parochial. What is parochial? I always confuse parochial with provincial. What is the difference between parochial and provincial? Like you get a parochial school but you don't get a provincial school. I'm not sure I can work that out. Tell me, tell me what I'm missing. Um, so a lot of household servants are probably going to be the ones, the specialists in the first flight. And then the rest of the first flight is going to be, um, uh, uh, 
infrastructure and, um, uh, you know, stewards and guardians and farmers and the like bodies. So, okay. Yeah. I, I, I wondered if, if they were roughly the same thing. Okay. Um, I think again, you're, that's from a, that was, that's, that is how you would describe something that exists already. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the literal definition of provincial, but I don't think that's what people really mean when they label something provincial, is it though? Oh, interesting. Limited or narrow outlook or scope. Interesting. I'd have to see that in sentences, I think, to try to try to fully understand that word but I can see how oh parochial school is like a religious school isn't it oh that makes sense so I think parochial is used more in talking about a place that Um, has limited self almost in it in a, in a um in a religious sense, whereas provincial is something you would label something that has no interest in sophisticated life. Um, okay. So these servants have. Why am I getting? Ugh. Please tell me that Steam is not downloading stuff while I'm trying to stream. That is very unhelpful Steam. Naughty Steam. Bad Steam. I think Steam is one of those programs that you have to tell every time you update it that you don't want it to run every time you start Windows. Otherwise, that is exactly what it will do. Which is very annoying. Okay, that's closed. Oh. Servants looking for... I, I, see, the servants especially would feel very heavily the oppression of the elves. If any of the humans received particular mistreatment from the elves, it would have to have been the servants... And I think that feeds in really well to why they named the town Rest. Um, it's, it's, it, Rest is a very angry word. And I think that these particular people would have been quite angry all the time, even a bit downtrodden. Um, so being in the position to be able to raid something that was barred from them during the occupation would be quite quite an experience I think the words sort of like freedom and liberty start coming to mind, but that could be my American brainwashing that tends to run to those words really quickly. Uh, then there's, then, then you're talking about the sort of like going back to our themes of trauma we're talking about the sort of emotional healing that you need that involves going someplace quiet and out of the way without influence from without a lot of people demanding things of you. Okay, so the phrase out of the way is starting to actually warm. Uh, I'm starting to warm up to it. Hmm. 
let's okay now that we, we we've got that let's Annie Oakley that's an interesting uh, interesting uh, section that should be on that page I don't know what Annie Oakley has to do with the word pass Yes, I guess I'll allow, allow, allowing, answer, answered. Answer, da, da, da. A little over. Fizzle out, peter out, subside, vanish. What is something that is so unremarkable that you don't stop to look at it? Breeze. Inconspicuous. That's, that's a, uh, uh, yeah. I think that's the word for what I was just thinking. Something that is inconspicuous is unremarkable to the point of not requiring your attention. Hmm. Okay. Um. More than likely, if you're traveling from Hartford, chances are you're going to Hedgehog and not rest. You know Hedgehog is there. Or you know rest is there. But you go past it. You see the road to it. The road is probably not as nice as the road to Hedgehog. Oh, this is a tough one, y'all. It's a tough, tough, tough one. Ugh. North Flats, South Flats, Drake Mar, Far Reach, Scholars Reach, East Timblin, West Timblin, and the quiet, the calm, the revenge, the blow by, the out of the way the mm. the sleepy see that just makes me want to go there <laughs> to call something sleepy it sounds quaint you know and a quaint it, something that's quaint and sleepy is somewhere that you hire a cottage and you go there for you know a holiday um I wonder if there's, no, uh, I think that would just be a tangent. I was just thinking if there's like a British geographical equivalent. There is an America. Um, pretty much all of the Western Midwest, like the area is sort of Far western Midwest, east of the Rockies, from about Colorado up to Montana, 
was it Wyoming? Oh, it was which, which either one of those is furthest north. Um, nobody really stops there. You're always going someplace else, like you're going to the Rocky Mountains or you're going to Las Vegas or you're going to San Francisco or the Pacific Northwest. Um, it's just a bunch of nothing. Um, the nowhere. Call it the nowhere? I kind of like that. I think it's got... It's kind of whimsical. It ties in to the trauma aspect and needing to find some place to go away. It ties into the idea that it's not somewhere you need or want to be. Hmm. See, I like backwoods, but again, to me, the term backwards, and this is probably really personal, but to me, the, the term backwards is either one of two things. It's either a cultural judgment, so it's not different to saying, um, uh, uh, no, I've forgotten it. It's not different to saying, um, shoot. The, I keep wanting to say redneck, but that's, that's a type of person, not a type of place. Um, yeah, it's not going to come to me. Um, or it's a place that I want to go. It's like it's saying a challenge to say that this area of a national park is the backwoods. It's saying... Um, that you, it's challenging me as an avid hiker to spend my time there. I kind of, I kind of, I'm. I'm leaning towards this. Calling it the nowhere. Almost like these people have put a sign up saying, don't come here. Plata land is an Afrikaans word. Yeah, I can imagine that. I've never heard of it before. But again, that that's a foreign word, a very foreign sounding word to someone who's English speaking, who isn't from South Africa. And doesn't really fit into our linguistic rules for naming things here. Okay. No, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with the nowhere for now. And like many other things that I've named, if I decide later on that it doesn't work, I will change it. That's why we're calling the place High River now. As much as I hate that. Hate that we're changing it. Not that I hate calling it High River. Okay. We've done it. We've named it. We've named a thing and it took us, what, 40 minutes to do. <laughs> to be fair, we named two places. One of them was really easy. One of them was really hard. Okay. Let me check my list. Yeah, I think. I think we're pretty much done. Um, Let's take a look at this really quick. Uh, we haven't really got anything in West Timberland besides um, Bridge End. And then, yeah, there's the Elven Ziggurat. 
in a, a town that I had originally called Kalanac. No, Kontanac, because it was French themed. And let's see, I'm sure it's in here somewhere. It's my attempt at finding, this is the closest I could find to uh, a map that I liked that was pre-generated for me using that famous place that, uh, famous map generator, but I, I still don't like them. Uh, oh, attempts at me doing, which one is this? Um, Wonder Draft maps of Penaven. They don't look bad. It was just a lot of work. More work than I wanted to do. Okay, why are you taking so long? There we go. That was a really badly done <laughs> wonder draft. Or ink? Incarnate, maybe? This might be incarnate. And this is the one I ended up using. Um, I just like doing hand-drawn stuff better. It's I have so much more control over it and how it looks. Um, and I had to... I definitely had to learn to sort of forgive myself. But I think that's, that's a thing you have to learn in general when drawing. It's one of the first things you need to learn in order to get better. Is to just let go of the idea that it has to be perfect like it has to conform to some original idea that you had okay that's clearly not where the map was let me do 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 i'm gonna try to find this map that i found i posted these on twitter but you might not have seen my twitter Uh, um, oh, that's because I didn't put them in there at all. I put them in a subfolder. And we're getting it open. We're getting it open. Here it comes. Here it comes. It's just really fun looking back at this old stuff that I had forgotten that I even had. Um, I opened up a, um, my squared paper refill pad and found these in it. Um, and you can see here, there's, um, Contenac, which is where the ziggurat is. And you can definitely see the strong French themes here. Um, Montmeilleux, Patouac, and Rochelle. Um... But I'm going to have to come up with new names for these places. One thing I noticed that I did when I was working on this is that I had little villages on the fringes of things. Which actually kind of makes some sense to me. And I might move forward with a little bit more of that. Like I have this place, again, this is a very Welsh sounding name, Drawerin. Um is a little village on the other side of the farming area here um, that also has access to Miner's Valley, which is um, uh, basically an old mine. Uh, and then you've got the quarry. You see, it has one name here, which is Andaris. And then if you look in the zoomed out version of this, it's got a different name. I can't quite tell. What is that name? Come on. Rondo? Ronio? I think, that, I think that's a D. Rondo Quarry. Um, named for reasons I don't recall, but it was meant to sound more elven, I think. And then we've got my little bit of racism here, which I've gotten rid of. Um, thank goodness. It's now just Lake Issa, and it's not shaped like an elf's ear. 
But again, you can see Kantanak, Patuak, and Rochelle. Um, and then I think this is a river out here that goes through the grasslands. Um, I think quite possibly this is a slightly different shape as well. This whole inlet area now compared to what I drew here. Just a lot of ideas that I've had that, you know, didn't stick or I didn't care enough about to... Oh, Rebel Hole, that's going to be an interesting that might thing that might come into something. Ooh, I wonder if I should put that... No, I think that needs to be saved for an adventure because it's not a very well-known thing. And that's one of our um, Splinter Group's situations is Rebel Hole. Um... Yeah, and then I've got this weird, like, start of a map that, like, a city map that I have, I think, I have no idea what it's for or why it's there. What does that even look like? I mean, this looks like some kind of dock, right? But what is this? What are those circles? Some kind of, like barrier or I'm just so confused by it I have no idea what I was doing here why did I just shove them into that refill pad and then leave them there maybe because I was still working on them I don't know I need to get better at my organization of notes and things or maybe I should just concentrate on finishing things that would be nice Finishing things is good. <laughs> okay. Let's let's sign off. Um, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you for watching this video. Um, that was fun. I'm I I hope you enjoyed watching me brainstorm um name of a place for half an hour. That just feels like asking a bit too much. But hey, we've done it, so there's no changing it now. <laughs> um, I hope you have a really good night and I will see you next week. Bye.